This is the mountain car problem. The car at the bottom of the hill is controlled by a reinforcement learning algorithm. The goal is to get the car to the top of the hill, but the caveat is that the car does not have enough energy to climb the hill by itself. It needs to roll back and forth to gain some momentum to eventually get to the flag that's in the top right corner. A successful case looks something like this. But how do we develop an algorithm to do the same thing? Before we can develop an algorithm, we need to understand the reinforcement learning framework. First, we need to introduce the agent. The agent is the algorithm, and to start the reinforcement learning process, the agent takes an action. This action is taken within an environment, which results in the mountain car moving back and forth on the hill. Then, the environment gives the agent a reward for the action and a new state. The overall pattern is each state corresponds to an action that is chosen by the agent. Then the environment gives the agent a reward for said action and produces the next state. In this case, we only reward the agent for reaching the flag in the top right corner. That's because if we were to reward the agent for, say, going right or going left at certain times, it'll exploit that in the algorithm. And so instead of actually reaching the flag in the top right corner, it'll instead really exploit going left or going right, and it'll never actually accomplish the task. And so a very fundamental rule of reinforcement learning is reward the agent for the end result. Otherwise, it'll just get stuck in the middle and it won't do what, what you want it to do. Now that we understand the reinforcement learning framework, we should collect some data to get an understanding of how the agent interacts with the environment. You can see how the data points move in a circle. This reflects the back and forth motion of the car as it attempts to climb the hill. This specific graph is called a state space, where the x-axis is the position of the car and the y-axis is the velocity of the car. Now we are going to parameterize the space using a concept called tiling. Tiling is making a grid that allows each square to be a Q value. I can place this grid wherever I'd like to make the problem solving easier, but for now, we'll just place the grid here. I do understand that I said the magic word that's Q value, so how about we go through a quick derivation to understand what's going on. In reinforcement learning, a sequence of state actions and rewards that end with the agent reaching the end goal is called an episode. We know that the number of states and actions is finite. This means that the rewards are also finite and can be written like this. The rewards are collected sequentially and, and G is called the return. We can group the future rewards like this thanks to algebra, but we notice that the reward in the future is the same as the future return. So we need to predict the future return. This is the Q value that everyone talks about. The funny looking character in front of Q is called gamma. That allows us to determine how important future returns are in our calculation. Higher gamma values mean the Q value has more weight, while smaller gamma values means the Q value has less weight. Let's take the current Q value and subtract it from the next Q value. This generalization allows us to examine every case instead of looking at each case individually. Subtracting the current Q value from the next Q value gives us a gradient, or rate of change, for how well the agent is performing. To update our Q value, we take our current Q value plus our gradient, which is everything being multiplied by the alpha parameter. You can think of alpha as a parameter that decides how large the gradient should be. If we want our Q value to change in very large chunks, we would want alpha to be very large. Whereas if you want very small micro changes in our Q value, alpha should be very small. To turn this into Q learning, we change the next Q value with a maximum. This will force the algorithm to pick the largest Q value, which is corresponding to the best action. We incorporate the Q values by using the tiling method. Each of the squares you see on the screen gets assigned a Q value. Once we do that and allow the agent to learn over a long enough period of time is how we get the solution to the mountain car problem. I do understand that people like compilation videos of the agent learning over time. So I will release a video of the agent first starting by taking random actions and then later on by episode 1000, it will just do what you just saw and it'll give you good continuity of how the agent learns over time. So that video will be coming out right after this video. Thanks for watching.